Guys, welcome to Comparing Quick Hitches 2020 edition. Well, we've got six quick hitches lined up here, and if you just give them a quick glance, you might see a few different colors, but the construction is generally the same. Let's go ahead and point out some differences here throughout this video, show you. Oh, let's just wait for Rosie there really quick. Don't mind us. Show you what actually makes these things a little bit different. One of them is gonna stand out from the rest in a big way. It's gonna save you a lot of money. Make sure you stick around. Oh yeah, really quick. If you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button right underneath the video. Make sure you read through the description as well. A lot of helpful links down there. Check out the other videos on the channel. Here we go. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, I'll tell you what each one of these quick hitches is here, you know, who makes it, the manufacturer, that kind of thing. Then we're gonna kind of go through just some general um, properties of them, you know, weight, dimensions, construction, uh, color, adjustability, and if they require bushings or not. As far as pricing goes, you can get that on my website. Go to goodworkstractors.com. It changes over time. I don't really like to put the pricing in here. I call this the 2020 version because I did a version about two and a half years ago. I put the price of one of these quick hitches in there and the price went up. It's gone up a couple times since then. And so, you know, it's like putting my foot in my mouth when I can't honor that price because the prices just go up over time. Okay, so this one right by me here is gonna be the WorkSaver Quick Hitch. This is the one that I've been selling uh, over the last couple of years. Uh, very popular choice, very well built, uh, good price point as well. This green one that you see here, this can be the John Deere iMatch. You're gonna see uh, all sorts of those all over the place. This next one up right here is gonna be a Tar River Quick Hitch, okay? And, and keep in mind, these are all category one quick hitches as well. Uh, next one up here is gonna be a Land Pride. This particular model is a QH15 on there. Next one up right here is a Nortec. You guys probably haven't seen this uh, on my website, but I did just get these in fairly recently. And the last one right here is gonna be the brand new one that I have, the Spico Quick Hitch. Okay, so first thing here, let's just take a look at the general construction. Probably one of the key differences between um, a couple different versions of this is gonna be in kind of this gusset area here, this cross bracing area between the legs that come down and then the top section, okay? So if you take a look, a lot of them are gonna have this thicker, chunkier, uh, beefier section here. You can see it there on the Spico. You can see it there on the Nortec. You can see it, oh, nope, not on the Land Pride. You can see it there on the Tar River. You got a little bit right there on the iMatch, and then you're gonna have it, you know, that same chunkiness on the WorkSaver as well. Now, over here on the Land Pride, if you look in the backside, there is a, they do have a flat piece right here, okay? A flat piece of steel. Get you down, take a look on the bottom side. It's kind of hard to see, you know? but maybe you can see it there a little bit better. But this, um, all the others that are gonna have that substantial cross bracing, it's all the way through, okay? On the front and the back. So that's gonna be one of the key differences uh, between these quick hitches. Now on a general construction note as well, you can see on the top hook where there's all the different positions there, okay? That's gonna be pretty well standard. Some might have an extra bolt hole or, or two compared to some others. We're talking these bolt holes here where you can adjust uh, the top hook in, in multiple positions. There was an old version of at least the iMash, probably some others as well, that actually had just a welded top hook. So this wasn't able to be moved and adjusted up and down, which um, is very convenient to do. So keep that in mind if you are shopping for something that's in the used market and you see an iMash or something similar, maybe just double check it has these additional holes here where you can adjust this top hook position. So while we're kind of staring at these top hooks here too, if you take a look, you see how this comes out here and then it's kind of a longer taper. If you take a look at the iMatch, for instance, it's a pretty narrow position from here to here with a, not as much of a taper. So you'll hear some folks say they have trouble with this top hook not kind of extending out enough to be able to grab the top um, link there on the three-point hitch. You can see there, these others all kind of, for the most part, generally extend out a little bit further, okay, uh, compared to the iMatch. Just a point of observation. They're all gonna have these spring handles that are on top here. So if you take a look this way, you can just, you know, rock that top handle you can see down here pay attention to down here okay when you open up the top handle it retracts that okay and then you close it back up on top of there just the general functionality of all of these doesn't really matter you can see there's levers on on all of them two one for each side there okay next up we're gonna do the old weight test on here got the scale out here hopefully you can see the uh, the, the the digital display right there if you can I'll go ahead and repeat it but I did add a piece of wood on here it's reading 0.0 .0. I zeroed it out with the wood I just need that on there to kind of support the legs uh, we'll go ahead and get some weights. Okay, so Spico's reading in at 69.6 pounds. This is the Nortec. 56.6 pounds. Land Pride. 68.6 pounds. Tar River. 
56.0. I match 65.4. Well, 65.2 it went down to. Lastly is the work saver. It does come with this, um, this top link here, which I'm going to take off. This is just for like um, non-quick hitch compatible attachments, if you can see that right there. Kind of goes in and gives a little bit more flexibility to connect. But also I just realized, let's see, the Speedco doesn't have the top pin, so that's probably just a few ounces there that's gonna you know, affect the weight, but not significantly. The work saver, 70.2 pounds, okay? Okay, I don't want to keep you hanging too much longer, but I want to get right to the point here on why that Speedco is going to save you a bunch of money, okay? It's going to save you a lot more money compared to all the others. Every single other one that you saw there is going to require something like what you see right here. Now, this big old rusty looking thing, you might see in brass color as well, but it's called a bushing, okay? It takes what is a category one attachment and turns it into a category three attachment. For whatever reason, category one quick hitches, nobody's ever explained it to me, need to get upsized to a category three by use of this bushing, which can be upwards of $40 per set. You need to have a set of these bushings for every three point attachment that you would normally hook up directly to your three point hitch with a category one, no problem. You need to get a set of these bushings for every single one that you want to put in a quick hitch. Quick hitches are just a fantastic tool to, to take the pain out of the hookup process. They're not going to hook up the PTO, but they're going to take the process of attaching individually the three points on the three point hitch and allow you to do that all at one time. So with that Speedco quick hitch there, you don't need those bushings. So depending if you have two, three, four, five, six attachments, times that by just roughly $40 for a ballpark and you can look at the savings that you're going to see. And did I mention I can ship these quick hitches out to you as well? So yeah, I can ship the Speedco, I can ship the Nortec if you want it, I can ship the Tar River, I can ship a used iMatch, I don't get news of those, and I can ship a work saver. So I can ship pretty much what you see here. The Lamp Pride I kind of keep for demonstration purposes, but I, I do get used iMatches in. Uh, the other stuff is going to be brand new. Typically, the Speedcos right now are the big seller because, again, they don't require those bushings. So get a hold of me if you'd like to order one. Now let's grab a quick dimension here. We're going to go ahead and take the outside to outside. Might come back and do the inside to inside as well, but you're going to see these are all going to be very, very, very similar in, in width overall, okay? Not really too concerned about the height from the bottom link to the top link because you can see, again, with all the adjustability that these have, you can play with this however you need to. You have more than enough flexibility there to make that work. So main concern is going to be your width down here in the bottom. I just want to show it to you. That way you can see it for yourself. Outside to outside on the Speedco, just under 29 and a half. Outside to outside on the Nortec, just over 29 and a half. Outside to outside on the uh, Land Pride, just under 29 and a half. Outside to outside on the Tar River, just over 29 and a half. Outside to outside on the iMatch, pretty much right on 29 and a half. And then outside to outside on the WorkSaver, just under 29 and a half. There's gonna be manufacturing tolerances that come into play that's gonna have that vary just slightly, but basically look at 29 and a half outside to outside dimension. Okay, now really quick, we'll go ahead and do the inside to inside. You're gonna be at 27 and a quarter on the Speedco, 27 and a quarter on the Nortec, eh, basically 27 on the Land Pride, just over 27 and a quarter on the Tar River, about 27 and an eighth on the iMatch, and 27 and an eighth on the Work Saver. Oh, well, I hope that was as much fun for you as it was for me. Got a little bit of a workout in there, but Speedco, okay. I've been selling these things like hotcakes right now, but got a lot of questions on them recently, so I wanted to show you how they compare to the other models that are in here. Try to do that, give you as much of a apples to apples as possible. It's not perfect, it's not scientific, it just, it's me doing my thing, okay? So I don't really care which one you buy, as long as you buy it from me. <laughs> maybe i'll cut that out i might leave it in but the point being the reason i'm selling so many of these right now is because of this requirement right down here it does not require the bushings it's a direct fit to your category one pins it saves you a lot of money that way again if there was some uh, majorly detrimental reason to why it shouldn't be set up like this i probably wouldn't be selling them okay but the fact that there's not and nothing has ever been said about the reason why that uh, these bushings are required for all these other quick hitches here I don't know, seems like a racket to me. So, so whatever. I mean, this is just information for you guys, help you make a better decision because a lot of you guys can't come and see this product in person. I ship it out all the time. So it's just to let you see 
what they all are side by side, you know, dimensional wise, they're all built to the same ASAE specification that is going to be controlling the uh, dimensional tolerances of everything. That way it works. And so that means it not only is going to be on the quick hitch side, but also the quick hitch compatible attachments. If something is branded as quick hitch compatible, it's gonna work with a quick hitch, okay? You may just need the bushings if you don't go ahead and get a Speco. As far as color, hey, right now they're red. I had some in black. You know, get a can of spray paint, paint it whatever color you want. It's just a basic hunk of steel meant to make your life a lot easier. Get into it cheaper without the bushings. Again, if you haven't done so yet, consider hitting that subscribe button right underneath the video. Make sure you read through the description. Make sure you check out the other videos on the channel. Until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.